From June 24 through the 26th, Pope Francis will visit the land where tradition says that Noah's Ark stopped after the flood at the foot of Mount Ararat. Armenia is a country of rich and ancient history, full of joys and sorrows like the genocide of 1915. The Pope defined it as the first genocide of the 20th century. During his trip, he is expected to honor the Yerevan Memorial on behalf of the 1.5 million victims who perished as a result of hatred. The Armenian nation, the entire Armenian people, is prepared to welcome the Pope on his special occasion and show their gratitude for having taken into account and commemorate, as he did, the centennial of the Armenian Genocide. In April last year, Pope Francis presided over a mass in St. Peter's to honor the victims of genocide to mark the centenary. His words infuriated Turkey and even the Turkish president, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, who filed a complaint. But for Brutus Mariotti, the pope's next trip should not be looked at in light of any political interest. The Holy Father will come to Armenia as a pilgrim, as a pastor, as a promoter of unity because he will visit an ancient apostolic church. He will also come in as an apostle of peace because he will pray for Armenia to be a place of peace with its neighbors. Besides the tension with Turkey, the situation on the border of Armenia with Azerbaijan remains committed to the territorial dispute of Nagorno-Karabakh, as it is the site of reoccurring conflict, especially within the last few weeks. We need to do a reading of peace, openness, a reading that says that everyone should live together. The problem of Nagorno-Karabakh has to do with Azerbaijan, which is a problem because we still don't know how the Pope is going to face this. It is a very, very delicate problem. Armenia was the first country in the world to adopt Christianity as its official religion in 301 AD, even before the Roman Empire with the Edict of Milan in 313, at the hand of the Emperor Constantine.